I don't know how to describe Reb Noach to people that never met him. Maybe Eric can. He spent many more years with him. They worked very closely together. I don't have a vocabulary to describe it. But let me just say, I never met a human being of that magnitude before I met with Noach. I had met Gedoli Yisrael. I was close with them. He was different. I love telling all of the story of how I got to Rav Noach. I was studying in the mirror, and one day I get a message from Rebison Weinberg. She wants to meet me. All right. I heard of Rav Noach. I guess he's got a Rebison. I come to the house, and in true Rebison Weinberg style, she says, I'm opening a seminary. You're teaching halacha. This is your salary. Let's discuss the hours. So, of course, I wasn't given the option of saying no. I started teaching EAT. It was a different, a different seminary than any other. Reverend Weinberg hired probably the best women teachers in all of Yerushalayim. Everyone was an expert in whatever they were teaching. That cost money, you know. The students, aside from the meals that came from Aish, there was an open credit card at the local Makolet. They could go in there and buy whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. It was not a large se a seminary, but it was very expensive. And at a certain point, Renault said he cannot afford to keep it open anymore. Surprisingly, the Rebbitson sent me to negotiate with her husband to try to reopen the school. I walked into Reb Noach. I'd never really met him before I'd seen him. I initially saw him when I first came to Eretz Yisrael. My first Rosh Hashanah in the mirror was the first year of Eish, actually. And he came with the first Talmudim and they dabbed him in the mirror. I heard some stories about him, but I never met him. And he starts telling me what he believes in. You know, I came to negotiate reopening he had. But he starts talking to me, talking to me about Hashem, what we're here for, what's with Kal Yisrael. I had never met anyone like that. Everything was so clear. He lived for nothing else. Nothing else was sacred. Nothing else was non-negotiable. You do what Hashem wants at any expense. Nothing, nothing was sacred. Nothing was sacred. He's ready to give up everything. And couldn't really care about anything else. And so clear. It made so much sense. Okay, where was he heading? Let's make a deal. You come to Aish, I'll reopen Iyat. And that's how I got here. So yes, the very first thing I learned from Rav Noach is that when the Mesilus Yisharim tells us that what we're here for is to get close to Hashem, period. Ha'odam lo nivra elo. The human being was not created for anything else. Lo nivra elo lezaneg al Hashem. Nothing else. That is the sole purpose in our existence. It was so clear, it was piercing. He was so real with it. He lived with that. That was the very first thing. The next, 
And I've learned to appreciate this so much more over the years. What he called Torah is Chaim. The Torah is not dealing with ancient history. The Torah is dealing with us today. It's teaching us about life. Every mitzvah has something to say. Every story in the Chumash has something to say. It's about real life. The stuff we deal with day in, day out, not some kind of holy, religious, I'm using holy with quotation marks, something detached from who we are. And above all, it was teaching us that same living. You know, this week's parasha, it's the craziest thing. The Ramban says it was a miracle. It's the craziest thing. The Egyptians are running after Klal Yisrael. They get to Yamsuf, the sea splits. The Jews go across, and the Egyptians keep running. Stop, think, what just happened? The sea splits, you should go run, pursue the Jews. Use your brains, look what happened. What Renault taught us is that's what's going on all the time. Humanity is insane. People don't see what's going on in front of them. They've got their plan and they just keep going. <coughs> the Ramban calls it a miracle. Maybe in his days it was, or maybe to him it was. To us, this is what the world is all about. Torah is sane living. So, you know, I came from the yeshiva world. And perhaps to you it's simple. But one of the big chidushim of Rav Noach was that studying that, studying how to think and live sanely, that's Torah. That's not just some kind of cure of gimmick. You say Birkas HaTorah before you study that. This is real Torah. Torah is there to change your life, to change the way you think, to change the way you make decisions. This is the essence of Torah. It's not the dessert. This is, this is the essence of Torah. Tachlis Torah, Tshuvu, Maisim, Tovim. The purpose of learning Torah is to transform you. And that was love for every Jew. I have to say, I witnessed it and then lived through it myself. Over the years, many people double-crossed him. He took care of them. I don't mean to care of them like a... I'll tell you, at the point I left the yeshiva, Noach was very disappointed and upset. He found it very damaging. <clears throat> Got complete severance pay. We were at a wedding sometime later. I was about to leave. So he asked me, where are you going? So I said, I'm meeting with a group of donors. I'm raising money for my new institution. Oh, let me drive you there. He took me there. It was totally out of his way. Totally out of his way. To be from Moshav Ora to Harnof, and he had to get to Kirat Sons. He loved, he loved Jews unconditionally. <coughs> He understood the human experience. 
His presentation of the 48 ways was so clear. You know, people could sit there laughing at themselves. He understood so clearly the way all of us in our feeble-mindedness were thinking. He saw through all that. But then, the most important thing of all, it was just so uplifting being around him. Because he was convinced that anybody could do anything. He had no tolerance for human weakness because he didn't believe it was real. He believed that the concept of human weakness was something we made up. Your limitations are the ones you set upon yourself. It was so uplifting. You know, in yeshiva, all the years, the mashkichim were always busy giving us musr. As great as you ever were, it was never good enough. And then, you know, deep down inside, we were always beating ourselves up. It was so uplifting to know that we're great, we're powerful. All we need is the desire to do, and we will be successful. In reality, not enough people bought into it. And practically, it didn't come to fruition on the level he would have wanted it to. And for that, he considered himself a failure. <coughs> but for anyone around him, it was so empowering, so uplifting. The guys in Yeshiva did the craziest things. They were ready to fight the world. No inhibition, no fear. So someone's going to laugh at you, big deal. Hashem's on your side, Hashem loves you. That's what counts. <coughs> you don't feel uncomfortable talking to a stranger about Emunah. If Noah created his Talmudim, he created a movement, and he also created a whole new vocabulary in Torah. You know, to this day, we have a vision. The vision is just a continuation of what Rav Noach taught us, he demanded of us, and we're talking about educating everyone in Amunash, having every Jew learn. It's been a long time since Rav Noah's 48 Ways. He composed them back in the old days. The five levels of pleasure that he ran into the Sefer HaChinuch. The Sheish Mitzvahs that came alive the misconceptions. You know something? Nobody to date has created anything that comes close. Our issue in what to teach people is only how to present it. In terms of the actual material, Rav Noach's material, his vocabulary, his reading of the Torah is still the most effective, the most effective way of getting people close to Torah, appreciating what it is, and as he would say, to really learn Torah. To this very day. I just want to end by uh, perhaps observing that everyone here should feel fortunate you should feel fortunate of being part of this legacy. And make sure you don't pass up learning Torah in the way Rabbi Noah taught us. 
Torah speaks to you. To you in your situation, wherever you're at. It's not just this lofty stuff. It's talking to you today, now. Learn it, cherish it. That's what Talmud Torah is. It's your sight. There's some kind of connection. There's something that comes down here. We certainly all daven that he should continue to give us the strength and the passion to bring about his dream, which is really Hashem's command to Shem Shemayim and bring every Jew to Emuna in Hashem who loves us all.